Hello, everyone. Today is Tuesday, January the 17th. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. You're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadon Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for future episodes, send us a text at 252-582-5028. You can also email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right. And you guys can help us keep the conversation going by supporting this podcast, sharing it online, and leaving us a good review on iTunes. We're going to leave a link in the description of this podcast so you can do that. You can also leave us a review on Audible. Did you know our podcast on Audible? I I did. What I don't know is why you're wearing a hood. Because it's cute. No, it's not. What are you doing? It's cute. Is it cute? No. I said that. It's not cute. (laughs) People on the radio. What part of no did you not understand? People on the radio. It's cute if I wear it on the back. Hold on. Wear it on the back of my head. Where's my phone? Thank you, David. <laughs> All right, so the verse of the day today yeah, read, read the verse of the day. comes from Psalm chapter 2, and it's verses 1, I'm sorry, verses 11 through 12. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are, the, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. It's not, not a very scary yeah, verse. Not a very happy verse of the day. But you know what's funny? We we can't take for granted God God's holiness. Yeah. We cannot take for granted his power. And I feel like when it's it's in those moments where we really comprehend just how mighty he is, it makes his grace that much sweeter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We we oftentimes think of God as either either a God of wrath, who's right. ready to zap us with a lightning bolt, or a God who is just all love and everything is all good, no no consequences for anything. Yeah. When in fact God is both just and loving. And it's not he's half and half. It's that he's a hundred percent both and it does not contradict his his nature to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. That's uplifting. So we uh we're kinda kinda cut the intro sh- a little bit short today. Well, because we got a big topic. We do have big, a big, big topic, topic of this important is one. Yeah, it's something that people have been asking for. Yeah. So we want to get to that content and give as much time for that content as possible. We're gonna go, gonna go get Dr. Shaw in just a second. But if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text at two five two five eight two five zero two eight or visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Make sure you're also following us on all of our social media as well. Yeah, you can watch the video episode on uh, clearviewtodayshow.com. You can also watch it on our Facebook page, Clearview Today. That's right. We'll be right back. Hey there, listeners. I'm John Galantis. And I'm Ellie Galantis. And we just want to take a quick second and talk to you about Dr. Shaw's and Nicole's book, 30 Days to a New Beginning, Daily Devotions to Help You Move Forward. You know, this is actually the second book in the 30 Days series, and the whole point of this devotional is to help us get unstuck from the ruts of life. You know, when it comes to running the race of life, it matters how you start, but a bad start doesn't ultimately determine how you finish the race. You can have a good finish, even with a bad start, and that's where this book comes in. No matter who you are or where you are in life, you're going to get stuck. Instead of going out and buying some gadget or some planner, like I know I've done several times. I know that's right. 30 Days encourages you to find your fresh start in God's Word. Life doesn't have a reset button, but our God is a God who does new things. His mercies are new every day, which means every day is a new chance for you to start over. You can grab 30 Days to a New Beginning on Amazon.com. We're going to leave a link in the description box below, and if you already have the book, let us know what you think about it. That's right. Send us a text, 252-582-5028. Share what God has done in your life through this devotional. Hey, maybe we'll even read your story on the air. Ellie, you ready to get back to the show? Let's do it. All right. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, send us a text at 252-582-5028. Dr. Shaw, welcome back to the studio today. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Hope you guys are doing well. Doing well. I saw Ryan tried to fake you out there while you were trying to get I did. I'm coffee. sorry. I, did, <laughs> I, was, I didn't have it in my peripheral. No, I'm look, sorry. it's all That's good. Okay. It's all That's good. Okay. This is Pastor Shaw. He's like... That was like, yeah, I'm good. I don't that, know if Nick so caught that. Years, eons, millennia ago, I worked as a waiter, uh-huh. um, and one of the worst feelings is when you ask a table a question and they've just taken a bite of food. Uh-huh. Like, How's everything tasting? Yeah. <laughs> it like falls out on the table. <laughs> like, well, I guess good. There goes the tip. <laughs> now, well, if you guys are new with us, if you're, uh, I almost say if you're new and visiting with us, I've got the church <laughs> welcome in my head. If us. this is your first time ever tuning into the show, we want to welcome you. If you're unfamiliar with Dr. Shaw's work, Dr. Abed. Don Shaw is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism. He is a professor at Carolina University, author, 
full-time pastor and the host of today's show. If you want to follow his work, you can do so at abadanshah.com. That's right. Make sure you check out his P- uh, Facebook page as well, yep. his Public Figures Facebook page, Abadan Shah PhD. Yes. You'll see lots of important updates there, lots of great content, scholarly articles, things that you can benefit from. So make sure if you're not already, make sure you follow him on Facebook there. Absolutely. And so today's episode, we, we began a conversation on yesterday's episode, Dr. Shah. Right. Talking through the book of Hebrews, talking about, you know, why is church essential? Why does that matter? And we had some people write in and mm. say, you know, I'm really interested in this idea of church being essential, especially as it relates to our salvation. Uh, can we lose our salvation? What does this mean? And lots of people wanted to know more information about that. So I was wondering if it's okay with you guys, if we could just take a deep yeah. dive into the book of Hebrews as sure. a whole today. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, book of Hebrews is one of my favorite books in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. And the reason being is, of course, I believe it's Paul's letter. So I was mm-hmm. just about to ask you, do you yeah. believe that Paul wrote it? Yeah, I believe okay. so. And there are very reputable scholars who just laugh at that. Really? They just laugh at the idea that I I would even suggest that Paul had anything to do with Hebrews. Mm. And they have a list of things that they point to and say, this is not Pauline, this is not Pauline, this is not Pauline. But there are just as well reputable scholars on the other side who say, this is Pauline, this is Pauline, this is Pauline. Right. And so we, you know, we're not going to get into that in this radio show. Maybe for another episode. We can do that another time. For another app? Yeah. Yeah. But I I believe Paul wrote it. Okay. Uh, But I believe that this was written very sort of early on in his ministry. You know, we typically put uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians or some, something like that, like very early on, right? The one of his first letters. I believe um, the book of Hebrews was probably written pre AD 70. Okay. Pre temple destruction. Mm. And reason for that is if you look at it carefully, you see uh, a lot of references made to sacrifices, mm-hmm. you know, the Holy of Holies and things like that, which means it is still standing there. If mm-hmm. that place is gone, and for me to be talking about it as if it's still there, right? Something's not right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, we're not designed that way to talk about things in the present as if they're gone. Yeah. You know, like I can't be talking about the Empire State Building. No, I can talk about the Empire. State. The, the twin the, towers. The twin towers. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. As if, like, yeah, the twin towers are standing. You know, when you think about the ten- twin towers. Yeah. Well, wait, they're gone. They're you know, gone. They're not Unfortunately, there sadly, you know, they were destroyed. Mm-hmm. So twenty years ago. Yep. Yeah. So if I'm talking about them as if they're still standing, which means they're still standing, mm-hmm. which means I'm talking pre 2001. Yeah. That's so true. Book of Hebrews, I believe, was pre 8070. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's one thing we know for sure. Where does this idea, or I guess, why are people so fixated on this idea that you can lose your salvation? Like, where does this come from in mm-hmm. Hebrews, and why is it such a sticking point for some people? It's almost like some people want it to be true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, there are many denominations and doctrinal systems that are built on Hebrews. Okay. I mean, Hebrews is the linchpin. I mean, this is this is the one. Mm-hmm. Because there are five warning passages in the book of Hebrews. Um, can I quickly go over yeah, them? please. Okay, the first one is Hebrews chapters uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Okay. Okay, so just give you one reference of that would be Hebrews 2, 1. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we, ha- we have heard, lest we drift away. Hmm. Drift away. Drift away to where? Well, people have kind of filled in the blanks and drift away to lostness. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's another one in Hebrews chapter four, uh, but let's let's begin there in chapter three, verse seven to chapter four, verse thirteen. Mm-hmm. And here in Hebrews four eleven, it says, "Let let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience." Fall. According to the same example, I mean, does that mean that someone can fall away? Right. Mm. Mm. Right. Okay. Here's a third one. This is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 through chapter 6, verse 12. So let me just read Hebrews um, 6, 4 through 6, okay? For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit. I mean, you cannot get more saved than that, right? Right, right. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance. Since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. I mean, yeah, 
What do you do with that? Yeah. I can see that it's impossible for those who were once enlightened, who were once saved, yep. if they fall away to renew them again. Yeah, that, yeah. that's that's tough. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's keep moving. Here comes number four, which is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 39. But for time's sake, I'm just picking out a couple of verses there right. for each of these five warning passages. Mm-hmm. This is Hebrews 10, 26 to 27 in this fourth section. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Ooh, what do we do with that? Yeah. Right? And then the last one, which is the number five, the fifth warning passage, which is chapter 12, verses 14 through 29. For time's sake, I'm simply reading verse 25 of chapter 12. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. There's the phrase, turn away from him. Yeah. yeah. Like we were there. We were there, right. but and then, then we, we turned away. And then we turned away. Yeah, it, it's, it's tough because they definitely imply, or, or it can be made to imply yeah. by our faulty reasoning, I think, that you can lose your salvation. Yeah. Right. Just, I, I can see why people would base, would base their mindset on this or their, their theology on this because it is, on the surface, yeah. pretty, pretty uh, laid out and spelled at, out. At just a glance, it seems pretty pretty cut and dry. I mean, just from these verses, just just looking at these outside of any kind of context, just looking yeah. at these verses right here, it's like, yeah, I mean, that's kind of do you think this is airtight. Do you think this is somewhere where Occam's razor kind of works against us? Where, well, I'm yeah. just going to take the most obvious yeah. and thing, yeah. the most obvious one, because that's probably true. Not Occam's razor in its truest sense, right. because in the truest sense, it has to be something clear, but it's not clear unless mm. you take the context. So without taking the context... What you're thinking is clear is actually a mistake, mm. right? So what is the context? So you have to, when, you, when it comes to exegeting a passage, when it comes to applying the principles of hermeneutics, you begin with the wider context and then narrow it down to that passage. What is the wider context? Well, uh, to start with, it is, re, it is a book that has been addressed to the... What's the, the, the Hebrews? Hebrews. Mm-hmm. What is Hebrews? What what is that name? Hebrews the all about Jewish people. Yeah, this is the ancient designation of not just the Jewish people, but the people of Israel. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So often in my messages, I will sometimes say Hebrews, then I will say children of Israel, then I will say the Israelites, then I will say the Jewish people. Okay, why do I use these different designations? Yeah, because most people would assume they're interchangeable. Right, right. Anonymous. Uh, at times, the book of Isaiah and a couple other places do that. Okay. But that is not really the best gauge is to interchange these things, other than when the Bible itself does it. Okay. But it does it for a reason. Okay. For example, will I call uh, John Smith, you know John Smith, mm-hmm. the Jamestown colony, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Will I call him an American? Mm. Yeah, that's true, because there was no America. Yeah, no, probably not. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I wouldn't say that to him. Uh, uh, will I call, uh, let's see, Abraham Lincoln a pilgrim? No. no. Why would I do that? <laughs> that's past the point of the pilgrim. Yeah, America's already we, been founded. We're now Americans right. at the time of Abraham Lincoln. So also when it comes to these titles, they're, they're, you have to keep the time in mind. It's true. Mm. When the people were in Egypt, they were referred to as the Hebrews because they were coming from the north. Mm-hmm. Okay, they didn't know them as the sons of Jacob or Israelites. They just knew them as these are the Habirus coming from the north. Mm. Okay, and I know there are scholars who think Habirus are different from the Hebrews, but I believe they're just one of the same, same people. Thing. Mm. Yeah. When they left Egypt, they are the children of Israel. Why children of Israel? Because they are just as naive and helpless as children. Wow. Okay. I hadn't considered that. I had never thought that. that designation. I just thought children of Israel, Israelites. Like like the lineage. Yeah. 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 And and, and there is a place where the armies left Egypt and all that. So yeah, they were not like little kids running around. They were, of course, it's more metaphorical. (laughs) Right. Right. Then there is the Israelites. Mm Mm-hmm. Who are the Israelites? These are the people who are now in the promised land. They had settled. They that had was settled. their land. They, are yeah. the, they became sense. a nation. That makes sense. You know, Passover made them a nation. 
But then you have um, the Jewish people because some of the tribes are gone. Mm. Ten tribes are gone forever. So, so they weren't the Jewish people until they were in, it was Judah now. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, when you talk about it in those terms, everything just kind of clicks. Yeah, because Jewish people, Hebrews, Israelites, children of Israel, if you don't know it, it's just like, that's yeah, that's this that's people. that people. But it's this people according to what time period they're in right. and what's going on around them. Right. Right, so they became the Jewish people. Am I? Do I know hermeneutics now? <laughs> that's, a, that's a cool feeling. Right. But there are times when God will, like in the book of Isaiah and other places, where he will address them as, you, you Israelites. Mm-hmm. He'll, he'll call them by an ancient name. Like for me, today sitting here, I didn't grow up in America, but I became an American citizen. I am an American, okay? Right, right. I'm an American. But for somebody to look at me and say, you, uh, what, what do they call the Jamestown? Col- you colonist. Yeah. Hmm. You know? Okay. For one, I'm not a colonist. But for you to address me as a colonist, what are you trying to get at? Yeah. Right? You're trying to get at the fact that you are a bunch of rebels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You have turns your back on the mother country. You think you are strong enough, big enough, powerful enough to stand up to the Redcoats, whoever the Redcoats are now in this generation. See, mm-hmm. see, so it, they can call me a peer, uh, 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 what do I say, colonist? Col- colonist. Yeah. But it's, it better have some reasons behind yeah, it. Yeah, th- there's, oh. there's not a, they're not mistaking what time period you're from. They're not right. making a mistake. They're trying to make a point. It's, yeah, they're it's a point, a point reference. Yeah. So when Paul, I believe, Paul, right? Right. <laughs> This is my radio show. I can. That's right. Yeah, it can be Paul. <laughs> hey, look for the for the next uh, for the next ten minutes. It's Paul. Hey, and there if you, you if you have any questions about that, or if you want to know more about why Doctor Shaw believes that it's Paul, write in. Let us know two five two five eight two five zero two eight. But don't add him. Don't add him. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll but, block your number. Yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. No, no. We we love you guys. We we're so glad you're listening. So so here's why did he call them Hebrews? Is because he is making a point. And the point is this, he's talking not just to the Jewish people in Palestine, but he's also talking to the Jewish people who are scattered all over Mm -hmm. through the diaspora. And there may also be people in that list who are not Jewish, but they are part of the lost tribes. Okay? He's addressing all of them who are now maybe sitting in Rome at a church where, who are you? Well, I am a... I am part of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. Okay, right. all right. But you're not necessarily Jewish, are you? Mm-hmm. No, I'm not Jewish. I come from the tribe of Levi. Mm-hmm. Uh, or oh. I come from the t- tribe of Reuben or the tribe of Simeon. Okay, all right. Or you're sitting in Persia. You're sitting in you know modern-day Iran mm-hmm. back in those days. And, well, are you Jewish? Uh, well, not really. You know, We were the ones who came here uh, from Judah, but since then, we intermarried with some other people who are part of the other tribes. We are part of God's people. Mm. So you see, see how 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 inner complex this is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The whole point is this: when you read this letter carefully, what you find it find is that Paul was addressing this to not the first generation, but the second generation. Jewish background believers, wherever this church is, we don't know for sure where this church is that Paul was writing to, or churches to whom Paul was writing. But this is a group of people who are second generation. How do we know second generation? Because um, in in uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 1 and verse 1, it says, God, who at various times in various ways spoke in time past, to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory, express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a better, a more excellent name than they." Okay, all those references that are given to the prophets, um, the majesty on high, the word of his power, they won't make any sense to Gentiles. Right. Mm. This is talking about people who 
claim this ancient lineage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then in Hebrews 5:12, for for though by this time you ought to become to be teachers, you need someone. Uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews um, 2:3 is what I want to read first. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first, y'all still with me on that? Mm -hmm. Which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. So these people did not get saved through Jesus' ministry. Mm -hmm. They got saved through the ministry of those who had heard Jesus. It's starting to make sense because if these... Jewish believers, or if these Hebrew believers that that Paul is writing to are second, third generation, then it's very natural that they will start to slide away. Right. It's start. It's natural that they will start to. I, I'm I'm starting to see. I'm start. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm starting to see where Paul is going. Right. Yeah. These right. guys are turning away. Right. Uh, and I'm taking my time explaining this because if you do it quickly, people will still go, ah, uh, yeah, but it still doesn't doesn't make sense. Right. Because mm-hmm. everything I read is saying that once you are saved, you can be lost. Right. So we have to come back and really pay attention to these these markers, these these clues that are in the text. So first began to be spoken about the Lord and was confirmed to us. So some time has passed. Okay, some time has passed. So these are second generation Jewish background believers. Um, they're part of a bigger church. We don't know exactly what has been happening in this church that is making this group detach itself from the church, right? Isn't that what it says in Hebrews chapter 10, 24? Mm -hmm. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of... Some. 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 Means the whole church hasn't stopped coming. Right. Mm -hmm. The church is still meeting, but this group right here of second-generation Jewish background believers is detaching itself. It's sort of, oh, we haven't seen them in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's going on with them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now when you pay attention to the context, read those, those first five, six chapters, Paul is, in a sense, even chastising them. He's telling them in verse 12 of chapter 5, I started reading this earlier, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you Again, again, the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. It means you're going back to the yeah, elementary principles. What's yeah. what's wrong with you? Right? Why are you going back? Mm-hmm. Why are you retreating mm-hmm. in your faith? Mm-hmm. But then, if we pay attention to the whole four or five chapters, Paul, I believe, spends time telling them how Jesus Christ is superior to everything right. in the Old Testament. What is he superior to? I mean, just let's, let's just pay attention to this just for a few minutes. So, Hebrews uh, chapter, uh, let's begin in chapter 2, all right? And um, try to find that passage here. If you have it, go for it. See if you can find it. Hebrews 2, uh, starting in verse 1. Yeah, yeah, what does it say there? It says, Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard. Okay. All right, so uh, let me back up even for a second. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's back up a little bit further, uh, further back, uh, Hebrews 1.5. To, for to which of the angels did he ever say, "Have you are my son, today I have begotten you? So Jesus is superior to the angels. Right. Right? Um, n- now chapter 2, and let's go to verse 5. For he has not put the world to come, of which we speak in subjection to angels. He is superior to angels. What else? Um, let's go down here. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him who appointed him, as Moses was also faithful in all his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than who? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 3. Hang on. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Moses, right? So there you have it again. Uh, going down over here, it talks about the rest that the that that the people of Israel failed to receive in the wilderness. But then go to Hebrews four fourteen. Seeing then that that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, 
Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Right. The high priests of Israel were wonderful people, but they could not truly connect mm. with God's people. Uh, let's see. So he's also superior to the angels. Uh, what else do we have here? Let's keep going here. Um, Hebrews 6.13, For when God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless you, multiplying I will multiply you, on and on. Verse 19, This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which pres- enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Mm-hmm. But Jesus is even greater than Melchizedek. Right, if you keep reading chapter seven, um, then going down to chapter eight, uh, you know, talking about the sacrifices. Um, what is that passage at? You know, the blood of bulls and goats. Um, hang on, passage on. here. Uh, you know that even you know here it is Hebrews nine eleven thirteen. For the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh. How much? What's the word? More. More shall the blood of Christ. Now, I know our time is up, but I want to come back and and pick this up Mm -hmm. because all of these imageries will not make sense to a person who was purely Greek or Arab or Egyptian or Syrian or Mesopotamian or some Persian. This makes sense only to Jewish people, i.e. the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. So... Second generation Jewish background believers are being told, why are you going back to the inferior things of the old religion? Right. Falling away and fading back and going back has a very different meaning to them than it does to right. us. Because we hear fall away and think, okay, you're just not a Christian anymore. Right. right. To them, it was, you're going back to the old why. Right. That's ludicrous. Right. All those things are pointing to him. He is superior to them, and he is the fulfillment of them, and you're going back to the shadows? So it had nothing to do, well, maybe not nothing, but it was not about losing salvation and going to hell. No. Got it. Maybe we can cover that next Yeah show yeah <laughs> let's cover it that. tomorrow that's awesome if you guys enjoyed today's topic or you have suggestions for future episodes make sure you let us know by sending us a text at 252-582-5028 or you can also visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com and you can support us financially on that same website we're grateful to all of our giving partners grateful for this partnership that we've established with you and our clearview today family and grateful for the impact that we have because of your support and the, the number of lives that we can reach with the gospel that's right the question for today comes from Thomas. Thomas G for you, Dr. Shaw. Okay. Thomas wants to know, what Bible translation do you personally use for study? Personally, I use the New King James translation. Uh, And of course, you know, that comes from my understanding of the text. I feel like the Byzantine text form is, uh, uh, is better, but not for a single iota of a minute. Do I think that NIV is evil or ESV is bad right. or NASB is horrible or uh, CSB? N- none of that. I-, I prefer it for a textual reason. Mm-hmm. Neither am I against the King James Version. That's great if you if you like that, but I'm not a King James only. So my reasons for New King James are very different than what some people think mm. so i like it for the text sake if there was a better translation of the byzantine text form i would i would pick it nice. i would use it do you use do you use new king james across the board like for personal devotion for study just use i it do for all? but cool. I, but i'm not against using the nlt sure. there are people who uh, are like oh nlt that's a paraphrase i know that yeah but sometimes it, it sheds light yeah look at it as a as a pastor your favorite pastor reading the bible and explaining to you yeah that's a great point that's a right? good point just look Very at it like point. that and other than that, you know, don't don't fuss about it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thomas, hope that's helpful for you. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Clearview Today.